Welcome to World War I! War in Europe wasn't a stalemate, so the British tried to open up a new front in the Middle East to beat up the Ottomans. The British were not the type to put all their eggs in one basket, so they came up with a bunch of different strategies. They sent a massive force to land in Turkey, but the Ottoman army, led by their commander Mustafa Kemal, defeated them in a brutal campaign at Gallipoli. Mustafa became famous and would play a pivotal role in the creation of the modern state of Turkey. You may say he was the father of the Turks. Let's try again! The British now began a campaign into the Sinai Peninsula, but progress was really, really slow. Let's try again! Since the British owned India, they sent an army into Mesopotamia but got stuck at the city of Kut and would later be forced to surrender. The British were running out of eggs. Ah, what a lovely day to dream of an independent Arabia, free of the Ottomans. For the crime of conspiring against our great empire, these nationalists are hereby sentenced to death! 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 Haha, <laughs> what a bunch of losers! I know, and did you hear the news? The bosses are going to strip the sheriff of his title and put someone else in charge. Yeah, I bet they will hang him too. Oh no! Is this Sharif Hussein ibn Ali, the leader of the Hashemites? Yes, who is this? I am the great Sir Henry McMahon, British High Commander in Egypt. I have caught wind of your predicament. Allow me to present a proposition. We are prepared to furnish you with weapons, gold, and ammunition, provided you rally your Arab tribesmen in revolt against the Ottoman forces. Okay, but only if you pinky promise to support a full independent Arab nation that includes the Hejaz, Syria, and Iraq. Certainly! You son of a bee! I'm in. On June 10th, 1916, as the call for prayer ended in Mecca, Sharif Hussein picked up his rifle, walked out of the house, and fired a single shot. His followers sprung up from the shadows and attacked the unsuspecting Ottoman garrison, who fled to the nearby fortress of Jiyad, where they resisted until reinforcements and a cannon arrived from Egypt. My Arab brothers, too long we have endured the yoke of Ottoman oppression, but no more! Join me and we shall reconquer Jerusalem and Damascus, like in the great days of Salah Din. I'm a bit busy today. Could we start tomorrow? I promised my mom I would unclog the toilet. I, I wish I could, but I have this thing. Nah, I just don't want to. Uh, I guess I'm available. Great! Our conquest begins today! No broad revolt happened. Although many fighters did join the Sharif, the majority of Arabs remained loyal to the Turks. The rebels took Mecca, but failed to seize Medina. With Allied assistance, they soon took the coastal cities of Taif, Yambu, and Rabih. The British sent a handful of officers to assist the revolting Arabs. Among them was a man named T.E. Lawrence. That is, T.E., not E.T., very different guy. Lawrence was an archaeologist and an expert in the Arabic culture. He joined the ranks of one of Hussein's sons, the Emir Faisal bin Hussein, who he believed had great potential. The Arabs were courageous fighters, but were not willing to fight along modern standards. Stupid savages! They refuse to get into trenches, they don't perform drills or march in formation, they barely know how to use a machine gun and quickly retreat when facing aircraft or heavy artillery. How are we supposed to beat the Ormans like this? You just don't understand them. They have their own ways and traditions, very different from our own. They've never seen modern warfare and are much more used to guerrilla, hit and run fighting. Oh, what will you suggest we do then? We play to their strengths. We do not engage the enemy in battle directly, but we go after their supply lines, their railroads, their bridges, and any straggling group of soldiers. This desert will be their Vietnam. What's a Vietnam? I don't know. I don't know why I said that. You're a weird bird, Lawrence. The Arabs and their British advisors began a massive attack on the Hejaz Railway, a crucial supply line for the Ottoman Empire. They mined the railway, blowing the tracks to bits and forcing the Ottomans to repair huge portions of it. 
they ended up getting really good at this. Perhaps it was due to the assistance from British officers, or due to the creativity of the Arab rebels. Or maybe because they were playing today's sponsor. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made and is available now for free on PC, PlayStation and Xbox. You can take command of thousands of tanks, planes, helicopters and ships of 10 major nations, ranging from biplanes and armored cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. Every vehicle is intricately modeled down to its individual components like engines, fuel tanks, weapons and crew, and they are all susceptible to damage from enemy fire. Different types of armor, shells and missiles behave just like their real-world counterparts, making it one of the most sophisticated vehicle damage models in gaming. War Thunder offers three distinct game modes. Crave fast-paced matches with enhanced vehicle performance and simplified physics? Play Arcade! Are you looking for the ultimate challenge and the most realistic vehicle experience? Then Simulator is the choice for you. You can also play Realistic Mode for the perfect middle ground between intensity and authenticity. I personally really like War Thunder's X-Ray view, which allows you to see exactly what happens when your vehicle or an enemy is destroyed. You can see precisely where the shell penetrated, which components were affected and what ultimately led to the destruction of the vehicle. And best of all, War Thunder is heavily optimized to deliver a lag-free experience with impressive visuals and high frame rates, even on lower-end machines. So join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles today and delve into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder. You can play War Thunder now using my link in the video description or pinned comment to sign up. If you make a new account or haven't played in 6 months, you will also receive a massive bonus pack with lots of goodies to give you a head start in the game. You will receive 3 premium vehicles as well as a 50% experience and income booster, 2 advanced vehicles for rent, 100,000 silver lions and 7 days of premium account time among other things. The offer is available for a limited time only, so don't forget to claim it now. So, the Arab rebels were getting really good at destroying the Ottoman railway. Knowing that straight segments of rail could be easily repaired, they targeted curves where they knew additional work would be required. The Allies developed mines that bent the metal into tulip shapes, doubling the required repair time. The attacks then extended into anything that would hinder the Ottomans' war efforts. They went after rail stations, water towers and bridges. But they didn't just blow the bridges up. <laughs> oh no, my dear viewer. The Ottomans would just build another one, and that would be too easy. They damaged them just enough so that they would become unusable. The Turks were then forced to demolish it themselves before they could rebuild it. During this time, Lawrence was becoming very close to his Arab companions. He became fluent in their language, learned their customs, and even dressed in their traditional clothes. Unlike most British officers, who at the time had a colonial view of the Arabs, often thinking of them as an inferior race, Lawrence learned to value and respect them. Lawrence and Emir Faisal now set their sights on Aqaba, the last Red Sea port under Ottoman control. But how will we take it? There is a massive deadly desert between us and Aqaba, and if we go around it, the Ottomans will see us coming a mile away. Well, then let's cross the deadly desert. You did hear me call it deadly, right? The rebels prepared to cross the desert with everything they had, which was about 40 fighters and a bunch of gold to recruit soldiers from local tribes. They endured scorching heat during the day and chilling temperatures at night, facing exhaustion and dehydration. The Arabs went from well to well, attacking the Turkish garrisons, hiring new soldiers, sabotaging the railroad and creating distractions to confuse the Ottoman from their actual goal. As they neared Aqaba, the rebels numbered around 500, including Auda Abutai, leader of a Bedouin tribe that had joined them during their trip in the desert. By July 2nd, the Arabs surrounded the outnumbered Turkish garrison, encamped at the outpost of Abba Elisan. They fired upon the Turkish soldiers from the hills, but the scorching heat made them ineffective at hitting their enemies. This is taking forever! What kind of plan is this, Lawrence? It's not the plan's fault. Your men shoot a lot, but hit a little. Oh yes? Is that what you think? Stupid know-it-all Brit, you wanna see us hit? Huh? Do you? Do you? I mean, yes, I do. Okay, that's it. Bedouins, charge! You heard the man, charge! <laughs> 
Somehow, Lawrence accidentally shot his camel in the head and almost got himself killed during the charge. Still, the attack was a massive success. They defeated the Turkish garrison and only lost two fighters. And Lawrence's camel. Don't forget about Lawrence's camel. Never forget. With the garrison crushed, the city of Aqaba fell quickly. This was an incredible achievement for the rebels. An irregular and improvised army had seized a key port city from a regular, well-trained and well-equipped Turkish army that had managed to withstand an attack from the Royal Navy. Thanks to the success, the Allies now had a serious shot at taking Palestine and Syria from the Ottomans. Lawrence rushed to Cairo to tell his superiors about his victory. He claimed to have crossed the desert in just 49 hours, which is impossible. It was not possible for him to have crossed the desert so fast with the means he had available. This is an important reminder that although he accomplished great things, Lawrence was very fond of embellishing his accomplishments and sometimes perhaps even lying about some of them. In 1917, Lawrence and his team bombed a bridge as a particularly long train was crossing it, causing a tremendous crash. Lawrence later found out that the train was carrying women and sick people, and he reportedly never recovered from the guilt. British officers ordered Lawrence to take out the Yarmouk Valley Bridge to separate the Ottomans in Palestine from Syria. This was timed just as the British prepared another offensive, but the mission was considered to be a suicide mission. I'll do it. Did you not hear them call it a suicide mission? Eh, what's the worst that could happen? Well, a lot. As the squad approached the bridge, they were fired upon by a local farmer who mistook them for raiders and alerted the Turkish guard, which forced them to abort the mission. On his way back, Lawrence claims to have traveled to Dera, where he claims to have been captured and physically and sexually abused. I say claim because modern historians have seriously questioned the veracity of this event, and it remains heavily debated to this day. On October 21st, a large Turkish force attacked the Arab regular army outpost at Wadi Musa, but the Arab regular army managed to hold their ground and repelled the attack, causing massive casualties. During December, the Allies sieged Jerusalem and took the holy city after a month of fighting. The Arabs attacked the important farming town of Tafila and once again repelled the Turkish attempts to retake it. With the German Spring Offensive in 1918, the British were forced to focus their resources in Europe and temporarily slow their aggression. But the Arab divisions pressed on. Lawrence and the Emir continued their raids. In May 1918, they destroyed 25 bridges along the course of the railway and the Imperial Camel Corps took the key station of Mudawara. Ottoman forces began to falter and the Allies prepared to take Damascus. The Arab army advanced to the east of the Jordan River, drawing Ottoman forces towards them. The main Allied army then began its advance to the west of the river, while Lawrence led his unit to blow up key bridges to prevent the movement of Ottoman reinforcements and sabotage the railroad to stop any supplies from coming in. As the Ottoman army began to collapse, retreating soldiers entered the village of Tafas and massacred everyone there. Upon hearing this, the Arab army pursued them, and for the first time in the war, Lawrence ordered for there to be no prisoners. In his book, he claims to have commanded his men to machine gun 250 captured soldiers, although again, the veracity of this event is still debated. With more Arabs joining the revolt, and with the Allies fast approaching, the Turks desperately retreated and surrendered en masse. The Allies finally entered the city of Damascus. Phew, it was a tough fight, but we finally did it. It was a pleasure doing business with you. I'm sure that my new country, Britain and France, will get to be best buddies. Yeah, um, about that... Uh, yes? It is a bit awkward, but we expected you all to get killed in the fighting, so we wouldn't have to get to this. But, uh... But? The Brits and I kind of signed an agreement years ago and partitioned this entire land for us. While McMahon was promising Hussein that Arabs would become independent, the French and British secretly signed the Sykes-Picot Agreement. They partitioned Arabia with no consideration for religious or cultural differences, 
grouping long-time adversaries into one nation and separating long-standing allies. This agreement was a major factor in the region's ongoing destabilization. Lawrence had long known about this and chose to lie to his Arab friends. He was, after all, British, and his loyalty lay with his country. To be fair, the Arab leaders had also learned about the agreement years ago, but knew that there was little they could do except hope that they could capture enough cities to somehow negotiate a better agreement, which did not work. T.E. Lawrence returned to his homeland and became a legend, Lawrence of Arabia. He participated in politics, trying to help his Arab friends, but to no avail. He joined the Air Force and eventually retired to a college, tormented by guilt and likely PTSD. He enjoyed high-speed motorbike rides, and one day he crashed while trying to avoid two kids who had gotten in his way. Lawrence passed away from his injuries a few days later at the age of 46. Thank you again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to play it for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox now by using my link in the pinned comment or video description. New and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles and other goodies. But it is only available for a limited time, so make sure not to miss it.